each of you guys is going to need to have a bucket. Now last day we did a little assignment where we were taking the tops off the buckets, but only half of you got them done. Each and every one of you will need one, so your first step here is to go and grab yourself a bucket from outside, make sure the top's off of it. Rinse out the residue that's inside, you don't want that, the rest of that finish in there, rinse it out. And then we are going to start cutting up your bucket. We will be using a jigsaw for cutting it, so you want to have some eye protection on. For doing this, eye protection's on the wall there. We have four jigsaws just over on the side. Help yourself when you're ready. The classifiers we're going to be making, we want to be about eight inches tall. Eh, six to eight inches tall. That way you can get enough material in them to fill up a pan. I played around with it and I found that if you rub the edge of the jigsaw right against the edge of this little lip here, it creates uh, just the right measurement to give you a nice size classifier. So our first step is to, top, to cut the top of this bucket off. To do that, use the jigsaw, bump it up against that lip there, just like that. Pull the trigger and we're just going to slowly plunge our way in. cut around, make sure that the edge of the jigsaw is just rubbing on that edge. Remember, the blade is coming out inside. You don't want your hand in there somewhere. Okay, keep your fingers away from that blade. steps in this whole process right now and then I'm going to let everyone go and get those steps done before I show you the rest. Do we well, need the bottom part? You will use a section of the bottom. The rest of the bottom is left over but you're going to keep that because we will always need buckets for just like storing cons or whatever. We will be using all of it. Okay, your next step is to draw a line all the way around. Just take that little plastic bin I gave you. It's about three inches tall. That'll be perfect. Take your Sharpie, put it on there, spin the bucket around, it'll draw a nice line all the way around. When we make this classifier, we have the bucket, we need something to go inside of that to hold the mesh in place. So we're going to cut a second little band of this same plastic off here and use that band to hold the mesh in place. I make it fairly thick. I make it fairly thick here so that we don't have the risk of any of the chicken wire, that, uh, that hardware cloth, those sharp points sticking up into the classifier because it will draw blood. You don't want that. Same thing, it's a little bit more difficult here because we have nothing to follow except the green line. I missed. Try this again. It's kicking on me. It's in. Watch your fingers on that blade. Carefully follow that line. All the way around. This we'll use just for a storage device for us, so make sure you keep that. This and that go together. They'll push together and they'll hold the chicken wire in place later on. I think put that in upside down. What's that? Genius. I'm a genius. No, I'm not a genius. I found instructions for making these things online. There we go. That's the way it's supposed to go. I will show you the rest of the steps when we get a few this far. Go for it. No. Everyone watching now? Yeah. Everyone paying attention? Okay, the next step is uh, to make a little jig for helping us make this. Now we only need two or three of these for the whole class. Oh, 
We got six benches, let's make six of them. So we have one per bench. What we need is a disc of wood that fits just inside here. And we're gonna use that disc of wood to form the wire around. Because this doesn't have much support to it, when we start hammering, if we tried hammering against that, it wouldn't give us any support. Wood's a lot stronger, we can actually clamp the wire between the bench and the piece of wood and use that to fold it up. So, take the bottom of your bucket. We only need about six of these, so just those guys that are ahead. Take the bottom of the bucket, trace it onto a piece of scrap wood. There's a bunch over there. Clamp it down to a table so that your traced spot is out over the edge. Please don't use the jigsaws cutting into the tables. The metal edges will just destroy the blades. You can see I've already cut about halfway through here. You're just gonna cut a disc out, a circle out. Remember the eye protection. Remember the blade goes through. Don't grab that piece of wood. You'll cut your fingers. Oh, batteries. Batteries are all dead. Okay, nice new battery here. Disc of metal. Metal. Wood! Wood! This is another type of metal, the wood kind. Okay, we don't need one each. Six will be enough for the whole class. So just those people that are at this stage already, you can start cutting a couple of these out. Go for it. Do it. Once you have your pieces cut out, Take a file, the tool board over there, and file off all these little burrs of plastic that are left behind from cutting. We don't need them. We don't need them. We just get just get rid of them. Make sure your edges are nice and smooth on all your pieces. Sure, even do the bottom because we will be using this for other purposes. Get the bottom all the way done. If you have any little pointy pieces left behind from the saw, if the saw cuts didn't come quite together and there's a, a little point left behind, just cut off the point with side cutters, just so it's not, uh, not going to stab you. It won't get in the way of building these things in any way. Just cut off that point so it doesn't stab you. you guys, people think from it? Thanks. Sorry. Doesn't look like we're going to have time today to get the wire in the bottom, so we'll do that next day. By the end of today's class, I'd love for everyone to have those two pieces ready to go. And for those of you who are ahead, if we can get four, five, six, whatever wooden discs ready to go, means next day, sir, please don't. <laughs> means next day we can just go right at it and get the wire in the bottom. We should have these done in no time next day. We've got 10 more minutes of work, and then we have to clean up. Now guys, you got your buckets all cut. Three different pieces. This bottom one is just going to be used for storage, stirring stuff later. The top piece makes up the, house, the frame of our classifier. This middle piece actually goes and clamps, wedges the wire mesh inside, and protects your hands from any of these sharp edges the wire mesh will have. So that goes inside, we'll pop rivet two, two of them together later on. The next step in this whole process is to cut a piece of this wire mesh, which is called hardware cloth. I always call it chicken wire, but that's the wrong name. Chicken wire is actually something totally different. Isn't chicken wire the ones with like the big squares? Bigger holes, they're sort of octagons, yeah, yeah. This is actually called hardware cloth. So we need a piece of this wire mesh that's about two inches bigger than the circle of the bucket in total. And I happen to find that gold pans are almost perfectly the right size. So we're just going to use our 14 inch gold pan here to trace on here and get our wire cut out. Now, use just a sharpie. Don't go tight against. Don't go tight against the edge, guys. Just sort of slant the sharpie out a little bit so it gives about an extra quarter inch or so all the way around. 
trace it all the way around. Don't worry, you're drawing on my. I don't care. Guys, can you pay attention, please? Put the phone away. <laughs> About a quarter inch bigger than that gold pan all the way around, and that'll be the perfect size for you. Use tin snips. Now, we're going to use these aviation snips to cut this out. Don't use my tin snips up on the board there. Uh, because we're cutting through wire, if you use just regular old tin snips, it would actually chip the teeth of it, it would mark them up. If we use aviation snips, they are already a little bit serrated in there, which makes it withstand this kind of activity a bit better. To start with, just cut out a square. Don't bother cutting the circle out. Just cut out a square, just barely big enough for your circle. Do not waste this material, guys. Don't go like two or three inches beyond your circle. Just go right beyond, beside it. Oh my god, you kids are handy capable. Okay, got the square out completely. Now, this job will draw blood off a few of you guys. This wire is unbelievably sharp, and you will poke yourself with it along the way. I have band-aids here, and I have a feeling I'm going to be handing them out today. Are they Hello Kitty? No, they're not Hello Kitty band-aids. But for you, I might get some. Okay. Once you cut out a square that has your circle on it, you can then take those tin snips and start cutting uh, the circle out. Make sure that you're throwing the extra wire into the garbage. Don't leave it laying around here. This stuff is sharp, and if you just leave pieces of it laying around, people will get cut. If you're paranoid about cutting yourself or stabbing yourself with this wire, there are leather gloves over on the side. Help yourself with some leather gloves if you want to keep yourself, to keep your blood inside your body. That's not a good place. No. The good spot is actually in the recycle bin over there. Well, you're Thank you for putting that in the recycle bin for me. You're awesome. You can turn around and put it in the bucket for now. Cut a perfect circle out all the way around, and then I'll show you the next step. Now that you have your disc cut out, nice and round, you're going to grab one of those wooden discs we made the other day. We made about six of them, so there's enough to go around for you guys to use. We're just using these things to form the... Uh, the mesh so it fits inside our buckets nicely. Put the wood down nice and centered on that wire mesh. Make sure you have about two inches sticking out all the way around. Take a C-clamp and clamp it down to the edge of the bench. Clamp it in there nice and tight. And then we're just going to start taking the wire and bending it up. That's risky. Be careful, it's sharp. The Chinese food. Chinese food is sharp? No, the yeah. Chinese food tin. That's oh, it. I see, yes. <laughs> Bend it up nicely. The clamp will get in the way, but we can fix that spot later. Then just take a hammer and sliding against the bench.
fits inside there. Get into that point, and then I'll show you how to fit it perfectly to the bucket to get rid of all those little bumps. Once you have the wire pushed down in there with or without the wood, you'll have to take a hammer and push any of the extra wire. Guys, rally, keep one over. Push any of the extra wire that might be folded up right against the plastic edge of that bucket. Pass it all the way around. form it right to that edge of that bucket. If you have any wires that are overhanging the wood, if you left the wood in, you might just need to take a screwdriver and push those wires back out of the way so that the wood will come out. Just a couple more. I'll let you do your own here. If you have taken the wood out already, you can use just one of these uh, aluminum discs I have up there or another piece of wood or anything that will fit in there. Drop it in, push it up against that edge, and use that as your guide for hammering. Get, get that wire right up against the edge of that bucket all the way around. There's one little trick too, if it's not going yet down perfect, you can come to the outside and tap it a bit and that will help it go down just perfectly against that wood or the aluminum. In the end, you want the wire mesh to be nice and flat across the bottom and then have a nice crisp edge going up for about an inch and a half to two inches. We're going to be riveting this on later on with that extra piece of plastic in there and we want to make sure it's going up nicely on those edges. All right. Go to it. I'll call you back together in a few minutes. So, you guys now have spent time to make sure that the wire's in the bottom perfectly. So the next step kind of sounds funny. You just spent 10 minutes getting that in there. Now let's take it out. <laughs> take it out. But it is in the right size and shape now for you. If you take it out, you can now take that next piece and carefully, I say carefully because there's a lot of sharp, pokey edges here, Carefully work it inside, all the way around, push it down nicely, your wire will go over the outside of that piece. Take it out to do this, don't try to do it inside the bucket, you will have nothing but a nightmare doing it inside the bucket. Take it out, put it inside like that, and now it should be easy to push that back in. all the way around. We're actually going to go take a hammer and a little block of wood and tap that down as far as it'll go. It'll go right down to the bottom easily. Okay, do it. So, hammer it all the way down, all the way around. It's just a block of wood. Just put the block of wood in there. Put it up on that lip. Tap it. Move it. Tap it. Move it. Tap it. All the way around until you're basically flat. If you're up a little bit, not a big deal, not a big deal. What you don't want is it to actually go past the bottom because then the wire wears out quicker. Okay, so nice and flat on the bottom. This extra ring is holding it in place and we made that ring tall enough that it covers all those sharp edges. Tanner, come on over here, please. It covers all those sharp edges so we don't poke ourselves when we reach into our classifier. The next job is to hold everything in place. We're going to do that with top rivets and little washers. Eye protection on when drilling. Go up about an inch. Anywhere you want for your first hole. And drill a hole through. Slide the pop rivet through. Uh-oh, I'm going to get the longer ones for you guys. Anyhow, we're going to put a washer on the inside. That's why we need the longer ones. I grabbed the wrong prop rivets. Washer on the inside over top of the pop rivet. We're just going to pretend this one's going to work for me right now. Take the pop rivet gun. They're up on the tool board. Slide it over that pin. My pop rivet guns work nicely. Pulse it once. Pump it once. Pull open. All the way open with it. Slide it back down further. 
and do it a second time. Now, yours will you'll break on the second pump probably. Mine won't because I didn't actually grab that washer, but your will get longer wa uh, rivets for you guys, so it will grab the washer. Let's see if I can break it now. Ugh. No, mine's just not going to break because it's just pulling through the plastic right now, but I'll get you guys the right one so it actually pops off. You want four rivets. One, two, three, four, and your classifier is done. Okay. Yeah. Now I've got the right pop rivet, so I'm just going to show you one that's actually done right. You have that one eighth inch hole, one eighth inch pop rivet, slide it through. It now sticks out far enough on the inside that we can actually put a washer on it. Push, put the washer on there. Uh-oh, where's that pop rivet going to go? Nope, never mind. I got that one off. Okay, one or two pumps. Oh, maybe three. This one's bent. Remember to open up the popper gun all the way, then slide it on more. It'll grab more, and then you can pump it more. So this one's bent. Got the other one handy, guys? Who's got the other popper gun? Oh. There we go. I will straighten that for you so you can actually get a full pump out of it. Someone bent the handle here. But remember, pull it open and that frees up that last little bit. I heard a wash and fall, but I don't know if it was that one. Oh. <laughs> Anyhow, that's what it looks like with the washers on it, just like that. And that's what you want on all of them. Washers just like that. Now, these classifiers, guys, don't go away. These aren't as good as the commercial classifiers you can buy for twenty or thirty dollars. You think? They're better. <laughs> no, well, there's certain applications because they fit in a bucket nicely. There's certain applications that we I really like, but they don't last as long. This is just galvanized steel. It's not stainless steel. Rally, please. This is just galvanized steel. It's not stainless steel like you would get in the commercial ones. So the wire mesh actually wears out. The nice thing about these things is you drill out four pop rivets, take it all apart, put new wire in, and you're good to go. My classifier like this that I've used for years, I've replaced the wire for about three different times in it because it just wears out over time. But it's easy to replace and you're good to go for longer. I leave the handles in place because it makes it really easy to strap it onto your backpack, something to tie it onto. Uh, though you don't need a handle on it, I like leaving them in place. The bucket classifier. That simple, that easy. We got 20 minutes before lunch.